Hello, my name is Taylor Crockett with Tinkersley Food Service. Today we're going to take just a few minutes to talk to you about our PowerNet customer portal online order entry system. This is a very simple system to use, but we're going to talk some tips and tricks on how to get your first order placed. So the first thing we're going to do is go to tankersleyfoods.com. Quick tip, add this to your favorites and this will be quick and easy to get to each time. This is our landing page and there's some important information that may be useful to you in the future. For example, things like our online payment system, track my truck where you can click on this, enter your customer number and on your day of delivery, be able to see what time your truck is expected to arrive. You can also click from here, PowerNet customer login and that's what we're focused on today. So when you get to our login page, if you have not received your username and password, please reach out to your Tankers representative and they'll be able to get that to you pretty quickly and get you started. So let's go ahead and log in. So the first screen you're always going to come to is your dashboard. The items most important during this training are going to be part of our order summary panel. And we're going to discuss the panel really quickly and what's here. Order numbers. You can see that those are blue, which means they're hyperlinked and that's going to take you to more information that's available for these orders. The order type order date, this is the day that this order was initiated, the ship date, we'll talk more about how to change that in the future, quantity ordered is how many cases that I input into my order, and quantity shipped are how many cases that have been confirmed to ship with my order. The amount ordered, the total dollar amount for the order, and then status is very important to pay attention to this column. For example, you can see that I have three orders in here that are confirmed. I have one that is pending and one that is in use. So for example, this in use order, I could click into this and it would take me back into that order to continue placing that order. Now this account panel down here below, this is going to be any open invoices that have not been paid yet. I can click into that invoice and make a payment right from there. This is really simple to use. So let's talk about creating an order. What I'm going to do is take my mouse and hover over create order. I'm not actually going to click on that. I'm going to hover over that and then click into standard guide. When I click into standard guide, it's going to take me to an order guide that has been created for me by my Tankersley representative. And it also includes any items that I've ordered in the past. So we have our Tankersley item numbers our pack and size, our brand, our description, and once again, these are blue. That means that these can be clicked on. It'll take us to more information that we'll go to in just a moment. NS means none stock. You won't see very many of these on your order guide, but if you do have something that shows up as none stock, it will show in this column. Quantity, this is where I'm going to go in and for example, here I'm just gonna click a one and arrow key down, one arrow key down, one arrow key down. That's where I can go in and add items to my order. Each is important. Every item that has a splittable case, you're going to see a dial in this each column. And this dial I can click on and that's gonna change it from a full case to a split. And for example, this six number 10 cans, because I have a one in there and it's clicked on this dial, that's going to be one number 10 can instead of a full case. Not all items have that available, but the ones that do will show up in this each column. Quantity on hand is how many cases are currently available in our warehouse. Broken case quantity on hand are those eaches that are available. This is the current price. The broken case or each price. Bid is any item that has a specific deal for you specifically as a customer in the system. Previous order quantities, the last order date, and the extended price. For example, if I come in here and put five cases of these sliced canned carrots, it's going to be 3387 times the five, which would be 169.35. So one important thing as well in this on this page is I can switch my views instead of this list view. I can go to a view that is organized by photos. 
and which I can still go in and click a one, for example, to add it to my order. And when I click the arrow key down, it just goes to the next item and I can continue to place the order that way if I prefer it this way. So I'm gonna switch back to our list view. I mentioned earlier about the blue hyperlink item. Let's click on these pinto beans. This, the pinto beans has a photo available for that item. This is a little bit of a summary uh, information on this item. I can click into details and it's got a little bit more manufacturer information and case weights, shelf life information, per, for example. And the URL, many times this has a PDF that's available with even more information from the manufacturer, like nutritional information, allergen information, and, and so you, that information will be under URL. Now to click off of this, I'm gonna come click this X. That'll take me back to my order form. I can continue to place my order. Now let's talk about search. So if I want to search within my order guide, because many times you may have 150 or 200 items on your order guide, I only have a few on mine here, it may be more useful to go search for an item you're looking for here. So I can, let's say we want to find flour. When I click flour, it's going to bring items up in the search bar that I can click on if that looks like that's the item I was specifically looking for. I can click on that, it'll take me directly to that item. But if I want to look for all items that contain flour within my order guide, I can just click return or enter. That'll pull up any item that has flour in the description that is currently in my standard guide or order guide. If I want to look outside of my standard guide because this didn't have exactly what I was looking for, I can go ahead and come up here under all items. And if I click on that and leave flour in this search bar, I'm gonna click on all items, and now that's gonna search for any item that Tankersley has in our building currently that contains the word flower. Now, I can add items directly from here to my order. You can see I currently have eight items on my order, but I could go ahead and add this from here. Now I have nine items on my order. And then I can go to order form, will always take me back to my standard guide. So now that I have all the items in my order that I was wanting to add, I can go into place order. This is going to take me to this next screen that if I have any items that are listed as a critical item that I want to make sure I never miss, that will show up here. I can go ahead and click on place order one more time. This is my order summary screen. And as I mentioned earlier about delivery dates, this is where I can choose my delivery date if it's other than the date that, that was listed in my initial screen. I'm gonna click on this calendar. As I look at my ship date, let's say I want this to come at a future date because this is for a catering that I have in the future. I can go ahead and schedule this, submit this order and schedule this for a future date. I'm gonna click on my calendar here. If I had, for example, Monday, Friday deliveries, only Mondays and Fridays are gonna show up in green, and those are the only dates that it's gonna allow me to choose from, is my Monday and Friday. So let's say I had Friday the 12th available. Now, separate invoice, if I had multiple orders being delivered on the same day, and for whatever reason, I need those to all come on separate invoices, I'm gonna click here on separate invoice on each one of those orders. Now, I can go in the system and place five different orders if I want, or 10 different orders in one day because I keep forgetting to add items. I can go ahead and submit new orders. If I don't mind that those all come on the same invoice at the end of the day, I'm not going to click on separate invoice and I'll let all those combine into one invoice at the end of the day. I've got special instructions that our driver can see here. And then I can enter purchase order information if finance or uh, someone in the organization needs a purchase order to be placed on each invoice. I'm going to place that purchase order. And then I'm going to go ahead and submit this order because I've reviewed all my information, it all looks good, and I'm going to hit submit order. And once I've hit submit order, this is going to take me to my order summary page. These are all of my orders that I currently have in the system in PowerNet. And you can see this top order shows nine ordered and quantity shipped to zero because it is still currently submitting. I always wanna make sure that this changes to confirmed. After a few seconds, I can go ahead and hit refresh. And we can see now that I have nine ordered. I have nine 
confirmed to be shipping and my status is confirmed. And so you can see each one of these orders I have in the system as confirmed. I have one as pending and I have one as in use. And so these in use orders, I can actually click into and that'll take me back in those orders and I can continue to complete those orders in the system. Now, my next step is I'm normally gonna go back to my home screen that always takes me back home. And I can also see all of my order summaries here again. Let's click into one of these orders that have been confirmed. And this gives me all of the individual item information, delivery dates, quantities, and, and which customer it was for, et cetera. From the home screen, I always, when I finish my session, I'm gonna go ahead and click on what looks like a power button here and I'm going to confirm that I really want to sign off. Thank you for taking just a few minutes today to learn how to get your first order placed in PowerNet.